Hey everybody, we are in my bonus room today and I'm going to talk about how to start a running program. This I don't know why I haven't talked about this before. This is obviously something I care deeply about and, uh, and I'm so excited to share it with you. I know a lot of you are interested in starting a running program. Um, or building your fitness with through through running. So the specific training run that I'm going to talk about today, I call a ladder. And uh, but before I get to that, let me just say that um, there are a couple of rules to to start out with. Some that are just related to general uh, fitness, and others that are that are running specific. So um, the first one is I'm standing here in my <laughs> workout clothes because. Number one rule is you cannot be self-conscious and exercise at the same time. It just doesn't, they work at cross purposes um, and you really want to be able to just let it go. Um, what, what you may feel that other people's judgment of you is while you're, you know, jiggling while jogging um, or, uh, you know, just uh, what, whatever those thoughts might be. Um, they're not helpful and they will stifle your workout and I don't want that for you. So try to let that go. Um, next is a general cardio rule, not just uh, running, is to listen to music you couldn't possibly sit still for. I have my silly boy bands on my playlist that I like to listen to, but whatever does it for you, you know, classic rock or show tunes or whatever. Um, the idea is that you want to listen to something that's energizing and motivating. I keep special playlists that I just use for specific runs because I want those, I want to look forward to listening to those those songs right they have I, I even got it so that I had specific songs when I was going up a certain hill on a <laughs> marathon training run but but um, but you know music that really does it for you so um, and and also related to running it specifically um, for this training run is you're gonna want to be in front of a clock with a sweeping second hand so here in my bonus room I have a clock that I'm facing when I'm on my treadmill and when I go to the gym I position myself on a, on a treadmill that's in front of a, a clock with a sweeping second hand because you're gonna be changing the pace either up or down every minute and um, if you're constantly looking down at the at the treadmill at the counter on the treadmill it's very distracting uh, and I just find it really annoying. So I like to use this, the second hand on a clock so that I can kind of anticipate, okay, here it comes. <laughs> so then when I do switch uh, my pace, I'm just looking down for a split second to do that. Um, so last thing before we get into the specifics of this training run are just to please be patient with yourself. Go slow. Uh, you've got all the time in the world. There are, there are training runs that, you know, that we'll, we'll get to. You've probably heard of high intensity interval training and those are, you know, short bursts of speed kind of things. That isn't what we're doing here at all. What we're doing with this run is building conditioning. So the only conditioning that counts for anything with running is running. So you have to be able to build the conditioning. You're not going to be able to do those kinds of sprints and stuff unless you have a baseline of conditioning. Um, and I see all the time the uh, people, whether it's in races or at the gym, they start out really fast and then they crash and burn because they can't maintain that pace for very long, right? And I don't want that for you. So, um, so we're gonna we're gonna just go slow. I mean, we got all the time in the world to do this. So, um, so the the workout I'm going to talk about today is called a ladder, and it's called a ladder because you go up incrementally in steps. So one minute equals one, you know, point one on the treadmill miles per hour. Um, so what I like to do is I start at a recovery pace based on the conditioning that the condition that I'm in right now. And since I can't run very often um, because of my knee surgery a couple years ago, I can't run much in the terms of distance, but also frequency. I can't do it much anymore. So uh, my recovery pace needs to be a walk. So I start at 4.1 and one minute in, I go to 4.2. Two minutes in, I go to 4.3. Three minutes in, I go to 4.4. And then 4.2, so you get the idea. Somewhere between 4.4 and 4.5 for me uh, is where I transition from a, a, a walk to a very slow run. So over the course of 10 minutes, which is one ladder, um, I'll go from 4.1 to 5.0, which is still a pretty slow run. But you know what? That's 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 my reality for for right now. So that's okay. Um, so uh, so anyway, so then when you're at the top of the ladder at 10 minutes, I'll hold there for a minute. 
and then I start working my way back down that same ladder at that same pace. And what makes this so incredibly helpful is not only are you working on building conditioning, you're spending time at the top of the ladder, right, which is where you build conditioning, but mentally you, you, um, you get this recovery built in. So obviously the recovery is important physically too, but, but mentally once you get to the top, you know you're on your way down. So it keeps getting easier and easier and easier and easier, and then you get to spend a whole lot of time down at the bottom of the ladder. So it works really well from that standpoint too. And obviously these are, um, these are uh, easily adjusted based on whatever your level of conditioning is. When I was marathon training, I would run uh, nine ladders, so 90 minutes, up, down, up, down, up, down, starting from a much higher place than what I do now. Um, now I run three ladders, you know, typically on weekdays, if I only have time for a 30 minute run, um, I'll run three ladders, so up, once, down once, and then up again. And um, and so these are just incredibly useful tools. I, I love this run. It has so many advantages to it in, in building conditioning and building confidence because really having confidence in your own ability is, is what I found to be so important. Um, you know, you get better at doing things that are hard by doing hard things. I mean, it sounds kind of like really basic, right? But um, but I never would have thought when I weighed 265 pounds that I was capable of running marathons, and yet I did. So I still get kind of choked up about this because um, I didn't know that I had the capacity to do things that were that hard. And so sometimes I feel like making good food choices is pretty easy by comparison when I think of what I can accomplish on a treadmill. So if you're thinking treadmills are boring, I'm going to come get you. Because <laughs> I, I, I just think, wow, there are so many things we can do on a treadmill. There's such great training tools. So I will leave you with um, the, the, the little note of inspiration that I keep for myself on the front of my treadmill um, that I read when I'm at the top of the ladder and I'm just dying and I can't wait to start coming back down. And it inspires me, and I hope it does you too. It goes like this. Anyone can give up. It's the easiest thing in the world to do. But to hold it together when everyone would understand that if you fell apart, that's true strength. And what I found through running and working out on a treadmill is that I have true strength. And I know you do too. It isn't just me. We're all capable of this. And so, you know, just... Give it a chance. If you think treadmills are boring, try a ladder workout a couple times and see if it makes it more interesting for you because it really does matter. Thanks. Bye-bye.